Tony Shea made a fortune defying the definition of what normal is. In fact, he encouraged people to embrace their inner weirdness. And even at an early age, he knew he was destined to change the world for the better. It's a big undertaking. It's, uh, it's exciting. Tony Shea made his mark by being a disruptor, a changer, and before it became a thing, an influencer. The late Zappos CEO saw downtown Las Vegas as a field fertile enough to grow something big. This could actually be an opportunity for us to uh, not just have a campus, but actually help revitalize downtown Vegas. This downtown turnaround story begins decades earlier. The son of Taiwanese parents, Tony Shea, had big expectations to live up to, starting at just nine years old. My parents wanted me to get good grades and eventually become a lawyer or a doctor. I had this idea of buying a lot of worms and then I would grow my own and then I could eventually sell worms. What happened? Maybe a week or two later, all the worms had escaped. So that was the end of my worm farm business. Shea delivered on the good grades and he ended up in the Ivy League, graduating from Harvard. From there, he launched an internet company called Link Exchange. It bloomed into a blooming basement business, but Tony wasn't fulfilled. Why not? It wasn't a fun place to work at anymore. So you sold it. How much did you get when you sold Link Exchange? $265 million. Tony left and started off in a new direction, eventually selling shoes as CEO of Zappos. His influence turned the notion of customer service and the treatment of employees upside down. Free food in the cafeteria, full free medical benefits, and free shipping on all shoes for customers. The business model and culture earned Zappos the title of one of the best places in America to work. Growth soared, and in 2009, Amazon bought Zappos for $1.2 billion. Tony stayed on as CEO, but he had bigger plans. I think it'll be, I mean, not just here, but yeah, I think uh, the whole area around here will be completely transformed. So. It'll be a very different downtown Vegas. Tony turned his attention to downtown Las Vegas. The idea was to breathe new life into the area, making it walkable, family friendly, and a place to see and be seen. And that spurred on a lot of other development. I mean, down Main Street, um, from the city hall perspective, and then really on Fremont East, because you know Fremont East didn't exist when uh, when uh, when I first came down here, and uh, they really changed things over. Las Vegas casino owner Derek Stevens says millions of investment dollars poured into downtown Las Vegas with Tony's vision. By 2012, Shea sunk $350 million of his own cash, and the so-called Downtown Project was born. It was a revitalization effort to create a hub for entrepreneurs, along with new businesses like the Container Park, shops, and restaurants. In 2013, Zappos relocated to their new headquarters into the old Las Vegas City Hall building. I think if anybody says that they weren't trying to at least um catch up to what Tony was doing downtown, they, they're lying. Former casino executive Kip Kelly watched the project grow and existing businesses tried to keep up. Almost immediately, the next bullet point would be like, well, how do we get Zappos involved? Because you knew if the Zappos employees bought into what you were coming up with, um, you had tapped into that culture or you were considered cool or downtown was going to accept you in some way. This independent report commissioned in 2017 showed the downtown project was responsible for more than 400 construction projects, topping $200 million in economic activity each year and created more than 1,500 jobs. We never competed in any way, but we had a lot of discussions over the years uh, about, you know, what's the next thing? How can things get better? Things like that. How can we grow? And, you know, Tony was uh, a pretty amazing, relentless, uh, growth, growth oriented guy. Growth helped many minority entrepreneurs and women business owners. Because of him, we actually established a culture in our staffing company. So it was like, wow, there, there has to be a lot of people like me because, I mean, he was so down to earth. He was always trying to help the community and made time for the community. But by 2014, Downtown Project ran into money troubles, and some of the businesses they invested in shut down. There were layoffs too. Critics began questioning the treatment of existing downtown businesses and the gentrification of neighborhoods with soaring home values and rents in areas where most people were living below the poverty line and the majority were people of color. Tony took a hands-off approach from the day-to-day -day decision making at Downtown Project, which rebranded to simply DTP and continued to invest in businesses and projects. The party continued as well. The massive music festival, Life is Beautiful, financially backed by Tony Shea and held in downtown Las Vegas, attracted thousands of young people. 
but also ruffled residents downtown. Noise complaints, traffic, and some seniors battling the crowds to access their homes. It, it's, it's very hard. It's, it's rough, one, especially those older guys. There are not very many young people in their building. It's mostly the older people, senior citizens. The growth of downtown pressed on, and now places like the Smith Center, the Mob Museum, and a new Las Vegas City Hall are reality, a trajectory now changed for decades to come. Tony stepped down as CEO of Zappos in August of 2020. No additional details were given, but we learned Tony wasn't done. A home shopping spree, wild parties, and law enforcement interventions were ahead. That's next in our part two of our series, Tony Shea, The Rise, The Fall, The Future. Joe Bartels, 13, investigates.